Si os parece, vamos a dar inicio a esta sesión y así a ver si podemos conseguir tener un poco de tiempo también para hacer mayor debate. Eh, esta sesión va a tener eh, tres ponentes, Eric Lamendur, Els Esa Almetoja y Josep Farré. Vamos a empezar por Eric Lamendur, él viene de FEDEN eh, y de ENGIE. Es una empresa que realiza muchísimos trabajos de construcción relacionados con, con las instalaciones y el equipamiento eléctrico mecánico y, y nos va a presentar lo que es conocido como el FEDN BIM Facility Kit que hemos pedido que, que nos muestre porque junto con el trabajo que está haciendo Senate Properties en Finlandia y con los propósitos que está haciendo el el departamento de voy a llamar así la dirección general de edificación para infraestructuras.cat pensando en, en cómo pedir estos modelos BIM porque en el futuro también se van a gestionar o sea que vamos a ver distintas soluciones de lo que ha de significar eh, como, como las mejores prácticas de facility management pues es lo que vamos a ver ahora entonces Eric okay. thank you very much si os parece, hacemos como la sesión anterior, ah. haremos las tres ponencias y al final recogemos cuestiones, preguntas y así abrimos el debate. Muchísimas gracias. Hello everybody. So I have some presentation to uh, this this afternoon. Well, the first is uh, of course the presentation of the works that we've done uh, together with some professional organization in France. Uh, I will describe that later on. And the second part of the presentation will be use case at NG level. It is a, a real use case. This, this is a, a, a contract that is running uh, using the 3D model, the mockup, the 3D mockup with the BMS and the CM, the CAFM system. It means that we are enriching the 3D model with uh, with real time information coming from the BMS, coming from the IoT, and, and we have also a link with the uh, CAFM system uh, for uh, maintenance and operation purposes. So I am, of course, part of the of the FEDEN, which is the uh, professional organization for um, energy efficiency, energy service company, including FM. Uh, but I'm also, so I work also with, uh, with Pierre Mitte at Mine Construct because those, those work, the works that I will present to you um, are now uh, with, with Media Construct in order to enrich the work that we have done. And I'm also at NG, I'm BIM and Digital Solution Director for the group uh, at international level. So I have, a, a, I would say, an entire view of what's going on in BIM and digital, um, mostly, mostly in Europe. Uh, so first, uh, I will um, uh, do the, the, this little presentation about BIM in operation. What was the purpose of our collaboration? So a year ago, together with the Santec Engineering, Santec Engineering is the professional organization of the engineering company in France, and the FEDEN is the energy service company in France, including FM. CPME is the FM organ professional organization. Uh, company in France. So we decided to go for a, a common uh, thing in common works, um, how to improve uh, and what do we have to say to, to the upstream actors of the, the construction sector in order to improve the use of data during the entire life cycle of the building. Because as I want to remind to you that safety, let's say up to 80% of the cost of a building uh, is uh, or stand for or are on the on the expo uh, operation operation phase, uh, and that we have to deal with data that are coming that are uh, in the in the three D model uh, during forty years. So we said that it is a great opportunity to work together. So with as as the beam the open beam philosophy, we apply to us the open beam philosophy collaboration, transparency, and interoperability. So all together, different company were to. I'm sorry, we work together and we produce uh, this document, which is now available for every customer. So now we are very proud of it because it is used in real time, in real life, and it is used for tenders. It is, uh, 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 it, is, it is used as an appendix, for instance. It's not a rule, it's recommendations, it's a guide, and it's, it's open to everybody. And then it, 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 it means that everybody, every stakeholders in France are able to enrich it and to comment and to put some other uh, items on it. So I will uh, have a five minutes presentation about what it is. 
So uh, we thought we thought at that time a year ago that uh, our industry, which means service industry, uh, energy service industry, FM industries, and engineering industry, was that uh, uh, to to implement BIM in operation, it could be a huge opportunity for, for landlord, project manager, asset manager, real estate and portfolio manager. And uh, what was uh, what was beyond? It was uh, what we tried to achieve is to help to define the needs of the real estate's uh, upstream actors ensure that those needs are considered from the origin of the project. The second objective was to make data transfer reliable from construction to operation. As I said, we cannot, do, we cannot create value at, in operation phase if we do not have the correct data at, at the early stage. Eric, uh, could you slow your rhythm? Of course, I'm sorry. Because I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the, 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 I'm sorry, but the, there is people that probably... Okay, okay. I, I will do it slowly. Okay, because I have a good friend in front of me who is even worse than me, you know, but Thierry. So, yeah, thank you, Ines. Okay, no problem. So the third benefit was, of course, to create new benefits for owners, operators, and users. And when I say new benefits, it's also a new solution in operation phase. Uh, this is, uh, and this means create the opportunity also to create new opportunities in the real estate performance management all along the building life cycle. And we are always talking about building life cycle. This is key in our approach. And of course, the last point, which is not least, is to make the digital standing of a building a reality. Remember, some years ago, one criteria which was very important was the green code or the green aspect or the green index of a building. Today, without digital standing, the, the building, uh, the, the building have a problem, you know, in terms of value, in terms of uh, uh, the, capacity, the capability to be sold, to be to be rent. So digital standing uh, today uh, stand for a very very important index. Uh, so using Beam in operation uh, really uh, implies and uh, is, is a great is a great opportunity to raise the, the digital standing. So that was the, the, the five, the fifth, I would say, or the five uh, main uh, objective. So again, our industry, I would say, uh, again, service company and engineering, said that BIM is centric. BIM is centric uh, during the entire life cycle of the building, but it requires, as I said before, collaboration transparency, and interoperability. Without the three keywords, you cannot achieve uh, the value, you cannot create value, you cannot be a world champion using BIM, and BIM is nothing. So again, the centricity is very important from design, installation, to operation, facilities management, and not but not least, renovation. So we strongly believe that, we're, that BIM is centric because BIM is First of all, a database, a database which is a dynamic database which is accurate all along the life cycle of the building. So this is our philosophy. So now, the kit beam itself. So uh, we, uh, the, the kit beam in operations give operations uh, give uh, operation gives a requirement and specification for all the actors of a construction project. The three, uh, different, the three main pillars of this approach, of this document, are first, data exhaustivity and availability, uh, creation of requirements and specification based on a kit beam and answering to the landlord needs and to the project manager objectives. The second pillar is data compliancy, warranty of the as-built 3D model compliancy to the project manager requirements and to the reality of the construction. And the third pillar, is compatibility and interoperability, organization, organizing the commissioning, most of the time carried out by the operator, for every usage in operation and maintenance. So the kit beam in operation is described the structured data, object, geometry, and attributes needed in operation. This is, well, okay. So this is about the philosophy. Now just a few, uh, I will open the kit beam. Unfortunately, this kit beam is in French because it's it's used in in the in the, in the, in the French in the French market. So you have to get back there. So it's poof. Okay. So this this document is available. 
It's available to every stakeholder, to every actor. It has been used many times. So the first page, you cannot read it. it that, that's, that's normal. But it's just a summary of the different uh, category of equipment of the building needed in operation and the attributes. Okay, so now, I'm, I'm for instance, I will take the, the HVAC. So we treated the HVAC, plumbing, electricity, facade, envelopes, all the different category of, uh, of the building equipment. And for each category, we summarize the, the type of equipment needed, and for each equipment, the attributes needed, and the planning. Uh, a guy, Mark, uh, made a presentation in, in another, uh, the American guy, for, on the LOD. It's exactly the same approach. And it's the same type of the, the same type of, of templates. So now, if I just take an example, I will take the, the, the HVAC. It's in French. So the, here you have the classification. We use Uniformat 2 as a, as a, as a classification format. We can use Omniclass. We can use Master class, class. But for for the purpose of our works, we started with Uniformat because it is, as a, an operational point of view, is all about system. So this is why we started with Uniformat, but we also can switch from Uniformat to Omniclass or to Masterclass. So for instance, uh, this is uh, all about HVAC. If I take here, it is uh, 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 heat production or cold production. Okay, here it is what we recommend as a level, level of details or level of development. We said that on, from an operational point of view, 300, between 300 and 350 is enough. And we say if you can go up to, if you can go to 350, it's fine. We don't need 400, we don't need 500. Because afterwards, it's very difficult to use it with technicians, with tablets, and with so on. So we said 350 is fine. Of course, if the mock-up is, 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 is designed in, in, in 500 load, no problem, we'll use it. But we will get into trouble in order to, to, to make it you know, fl fluid fluent and, and, and usable by technician, for instance, on field and so on and so on. So 350. The second point now is if you look at the, at the file itself, here it is. You have, uh, okay, this is the type of equipment that uh, has been to, to be modelized. And here for each equipment, if I take this one, it says a, a product um, cold, cold water or hot water production units. I click on it and I have this, this the file. Uh, the sheet, okay. Uh, you have here the type of equipment. Here the, uh, the, the, the code, the uniformat code classification, uh, the level of load, load, and the, the type of document that you can also put on the on an, as, uh, as an appendix, such as uh, technical fees, uh, commissioning, commissioning uh, data sheets, uh, process data sheet. Five minutes. Okay, that's finished. And then, and here, uh, you have all the attributes, the localization, location attributes, uh, um, manufacturer attributes, uh, facilities management attributes, and so on and so forth. And you've got everything. So this is the way it is organized. So again, this document is, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is available for everybody, as it can be enriched every time. So this was for. Uh, no, only five minutes, just a film. Now it's about use case, about NG use case. Um, I just want to, okay, to have a look at it. This is this is uh, this is the way the group NG is uh, is positioned on BIM. We are uh, we are an energy company, a large one of the largest energy energy company in the world. We are a 75 billion euro company, so we are very strong in energy, but also in services. And when I mean services, is energy services, but also building services, and we are quite present in different geography in Europe, South, South America, North America, Asia, Middle East and Africa, but also from, we have various competency uh, from design, installation, operation, facilities management. So it means that we are coming from our core business today to the, to the digital core business becoming the global digital player in the building life cycle. This is our positioning. So these are some, some reference, what, what we are able to do in design, design and build. I have, uh, a very, very nice uh, example here in, in, in Spain with the BBVA headquarter, which has been done, uh, designed and installed by our NG Spain uh, subsidiary. Uh, and now I just want to focus on that, which is operations. I will show you the, the, this project, which is the NCT Tower, which is a real project, which is running. 
and, and where the 3D model is interfaced between, with the BMS and the CMMS system. Okay, we have the British Library. With. So, in order to be, um, I would say, short enough, I just w want to show you uh, one slide, and then, okay, this is the, the, the this is the, the uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the NCT Tower earlier. Oh, my God. Well, so, so this is okay. So this is the highest tower building in Lyon. So we have done the we have done the installation works, HVAC and BMS, but all, we have also the FM the FM contract. It's five years FM contract, global FM contract. So uh, we decided to go. Okay, so we decided to go for the three D model after the construction. So we we retrofit the the tower. The, 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 the contract, the, the, the tower was already equipped with BMS and CMMS, which were linked together. But we decided to go a bit further, a step further, proposing to the customer and to the client uh, a new way of doing business, managing the tower. And then we retrofit the uh, one of, part of the building, uh, two floors and the technical, the technical area. And we interface all together. So now just, just this view, just showing that in, in the middle, we have a full web platform, which, which allow the client and the technician to have access to various data. The data coming from the 3D model, uh, either it is Revit or, or IFC. Uh, the data coming from the BMS, and the data coming from the CMMS system, which is SAMFM. So it allows us to raise the, the, up the digital standing, uh, to uh, ability to use Beam to remotely analyze some of the technical equipment, to visualize an usage of associated, an associated KPI through a 3D model, and of course, the ability to come uh, to a new offer uh, of workplace management. So this is the last slide. What I'd like to, just to, if I can go back, I don't know, yes, just to show you a two minute movie, which explain how does it work. Okay. So this is this is the this is the tower which has been designed which has been the mockup has been created by the architect. So you navigate via pop-ups. You can click here and you have a, 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 a complete, a complete floor. Uh, floor. Uh, you have all the equipment status. Can I stop it? No. Okay. You have access to IFC data. Here I've mentioned these fine calls, presence detectors, and lighting. Okay. You can visualize only the needed information. Needed, you can hide some some equipments. Just an example. Right? It's a screenshot slideshow. Here you have the view. Your real-time access to BMS information. These are fine calls. Uh, you know where, 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 where the, the, the last maintenance have been done, what, which, which will be the next maintenance, and so on and so forth. You have access to all the library, all the documents, all the written document per equipment. And you can pilot the equipment. This is an example how to pilot, for instance, directly from the 3D viewer, the 3D model, you can pilot the fine calls to, to make it off, to, to change the, the routine, and so on and so forth. So it works bi-directional. And last but not least, because it was in the contract, we have to follow the, the energetical behavior of each user. So that you can, you can with the, the, the presence detector, you can follow all the, uh, the, this behavior in, in, the 3D in the 3D model. So this is simple, but it works in real time. And it is used by, by the engineers, by the technician, and it is used by the site manager, it is used by the, by the, by the, by the client itself. Oops, I'm, I'm stop that, I don't know how to do it. <coughs> Somebody can help me? Escape. Escape, yeah, okay. Okay, here it is. Thank you, thank you, Thierry, thank you, thank you. So, what I would like, it's just, it is just a, a, a small example but it's, it's, not, it's not a dream, it's reality, it works. It works very well, it's received, well received, 
and it's and what is you see is very important is it's it is a it is a, a real a very levers for two things first of all it improves of course our performance so uh, meaning improvement of performance improvement means creation of value financial value for us for the operators but also it allows us to co to co build or to construct new solution with customer and to discuss differently and to cooperate more with 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 a customer and especially on a, on, on a specific field which is the workplace management solutions as soon as you have all the data, you can gather all the data coming from different environments, you can create, you can build something else. And you can go much more in, the, in depth for in, in the performance of your customer. That was all about this example. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, it's our Metoja, please. <clears throat> Como os he explicado antes, hace mucho tiempo, eh, ahora como desde el inicio del European Mint Summit, nosotros teníamos muchísimo interés en conocer la experiencia finlandesa. Ya habíamos tratado de, de, de poder traer a Senate Properties, eh, que es como eh, el, el modelo a seguir en el mundo del Facility Management. Eh, porque veremos muchos de estos procesos, pero ya en marcha desde hace muchísimos años. Y hemos conseguido este año, teníamos la mala suerte que cuando hacíamos en febrero el European Bean Summit eran las fechas en que ellos hacían unos consejos de administración y por lo tanto coincidía todo su equipo directivo allí. ¿no? Y hemos tenido la suerte que este año, haciéndolo en mayo, eh, hemos podido tener la ocasión de tener a esa Almetoja aquí. O sea que, thank you very much for coming to Barcelona. And it's your time. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Esa Almetoja. I come from Finland, like my friend Tero. But uh, I have a little bit different perspective to be in. You will see. I'm working as a senior advisor in Senate Properties. I have been there 14 years now. Maybe too long, <laughs> I don't know. At present, my work unit is workplace and uh, maintenance service unit. And my primary responsibility is to develop digital solutions for real estate management. I'm also preparing my, my doctoral thesis of uh, BIM in facility management. Here is content of my presentation. Firstly, I have a couple of slides of Senate properties, who we are and what, what are we doing. Secondly, I will have some words of history today and near future of BIM in Senate. Finally, I will tell you some ideas of BIM in facility management. In this slide, you can see a few figures of Senate Properties. Uh, Senate Properties is a state-owned asset management company. Uh, we don't act at private market at all. In our buildings are working about 55,000 state employees every day. We have about 10,000 buildings and 6 million square meters. Also, we have rentals from the private market, about 1 million square meters. As you can see, our staff is about 300 people. So you can see we are a subscriber organization. Our outsourcing rate is today about 95%. So this is our new uh, brilliant slogan. Work is not about where I'm going, but what I'm doing. It describes the direction in which our real estate business is currently proceeding. In the future, the employee will do his job wherever he is. He doesn't have to go to workplace at all. Remote working, common working areas, home working, and other modern ways to do your job are becoming more common. 
In the future, you have to go to the office only for meetings or teamwork. Maybe it's good to meet your boss also. Sometimes. Or not. This means that um, office employees uh, in the future no longer have, have their, cubicle, their cubicles at all. Soon we all are working in multipurpose offices with, with quiet rooms for concentration, chilling area for communication, and the conference area for meetings, and, and so on. That means that the buildings must become more adaptive as earlier. In this stage, the BIM will start affecting to our business. It's a good question if the state needs office buildings at all in future. Okay, I'm following, in following, I will call my primary topic. As Tero told me, we have a long history with BIMS. Uh, Senate properties began piloting 3D models on 2001 in construction projects. At first, only the architect made the model. In 2005, uh, we published our formal requirements for all digital documents, including PIMS. And in 2007, we started demanding 3D models of all design disciplines in large construction projects. And in 2012, we integrated our directive. Sorry. <clears throat> in 2012, we integrated our directive to common PIM requirements of Finland. Okay, today, <clears throat> today we, we demand 3D modeling of all planning disciplines in the project cost is over 1 million euros. We are still not demanding modeling for small renovation projects. Our strategy has been to obtain the 3D models for a major property portfolio through construction and renovation projects. You know, it's a very slow, slow way. Uh, we calculated that it takes 200 years. <laughs> so, because projects are so small nowadays. <clears throat> Currently, we have dozens of 3D models uh, in digital repositories. We don't update our instructions anymore, but we have outsourced the technical developing to Building Smart Finland. Also, we have a close cooperation with EU PIM Task Group. Nowadays, we are primarily using our BIMs just as a base of new renovating projects. The last one is, is important. We, we don't have an upgrade or upgrade process for models. Small changes are easier to make in Turo drawings and they are not usually saved to BIM. And also the original combined IFC model has been updated, even the architectural BIM has been updated. This leads to in unequal digital material that is partially unusable. Doing something to do with this problem is necessary. To the right, you can see how we are using BIM in our construction projects. Um, the orange part of the circle describes the use of BIM. In the beginning in the, in the project, we are, we are using BIM at all. Uh, before the design process starts. And as like, like Tero said, the construction project uh, utilizes BIM models all, all the time. And then when the building is completed and go to the use and maintenance stage, we don't use BIM anymore. 
We are currently developing processes for beam utilization during maintenance. I will present my ideas at the end of my performance. Here you can see our teams for 2017 and 2018. Firstly, we are piloting with our beam partners how can we ensure that existing IFCs are usable on time and available in the network. Secondly, we are starting to implement 3D models for existing buildings without construction or renovating projects. This is necessary because nowadays the most of our projects are small, but they change the building anyway, and the bin at the same time. So we have fully renovated buildings which does not have 3D model at all. Thirdly, we will pilot BIM Cloud Service. We believe that BIM Cloud Server could solve many problems relation to availability of models. I think uh, this is uh, familiar to you. BIMs are not utilized in maintenance today. We have heard some some visions, but uh, in the real world, it's not working. There are some practical reasons. Firstly, data incorporated for maintenance is minimal. That's because BIMs are mainly made for the construction project. The maintenance information has not saved in the model because the construction model, uh, construction project doesn't need it. Also, building designers are not the best stakeholder to define the maintenance tasks. Secondly, data required for maintenance is mostly dynamic, and BIM is very static, as we know. Dynamic data is, for ex I mean, it's energy consumption, indoor air quality, temperature, and so on. Thirdly, BIM is not suitable for continuous data transferring. When, uh, when there excludes a change in the building, for example, the wall removing or adding, we will have to up upgrade by CAD tools. It's not possible to transfer information from an other IT solution. May maybe Tero has an another opinion. <laughs> maybe, maybe in the near future. The fourth reason is the capacity problem. BIM is a large file, and it demands exceptional efficiency for computers and telecommunication. Usually, it's not possible to use BIM by mobile devices. Okay. Finally, I will present my research project, which I'm presenting with Aalto University. Our targets are here. Uh, finding and gathering real estate data from internal and external sources. Controlling building intelligently and finding possibilities of new services. And visualizing the building and finding new use cases for PEN. <clears throat> I suppose that the phases of modeling are familiar to you, from as required model to as mandate model. We have developed two models more, uh, maintenance model and conditions model. On the left side of the slide, you can see stage of building life lifespan. Uh, the constructions, construction stage ends uh, when the building completes and uh, the maintenance and use stage starts. Uh, these two new models are intended to maintenance and use. And the, the bottom of the slide, you can see uh, some processes which are using these new models. 
property services can get many benefits of maintenance model and some of the conditions model. Workplace services can get many benefits of conditions model and some of the maintenance model. And broadly, users can get all their benefits of, of conditions model. On the next slides, I will tell you what these models really are. The maintenance model is an asmantide model which has enriched by the operational information. It makes visible the hidden objects, visualize equipment location, and enable the navigation. It observes different areas and building service systems areas of effect. It helps the designing of user modifications, wire and pipe roads and logging and access control. It helps to pre prepare for service operations, such as find proper tools, stands and spare parts beforehand. It enables simulating energy consumption and indoor climate, fire events and rescue operations. And it helps to orientate for safety norms and evacuation. I think this is maybe the most interesting model. The conditions model is a virtual version of the building, which combines external and internal dynamic data and presents it in common visual interface. It visualizes indoor conditions, service requests, equipment status, energy consumption, and door locking. It helps to analyze HVAC settings as well as reasons and consequences of deviations. It helps to identify reasons of user complements and energy consumption change. It locates persons at work and at rescue events, uh, portable equipment and free workplaces. Okay, two slides left. Um, I I want to emphasize this is um, uh, my vision of visualization and it means it's in the same time it's my vision of conditions model. Uh, the, the conditions model has, any, has many use cases as users. So we have to ask who should be responsible to creating stakeholders visualization. The planning group creates IFCs from which has created the maintenance model. The maintenance model has recorded to the database uh, component by component, detail by detail, bit by bit. By this interface between maintenance model and database, we have to define our security demands because in, in our uh, operational environment, everything in our buildings is not public. We have uh, army buildings, police buildings, prisons, and so on. Everything can't be public. Also, to, to this same database has recorded all necessary information from external sources, such as energy management, digital service manual, financial management, building automation, IoT, and so on. And this is important. Every external data or value has connected to certain IFC component. That means that, uh, uh, for example, the temperature, measure temperature, nose, in which building, which floor, and which room, and which, which component it belongs. After we have recorded this all, all information and data in database, we can offer this all data by an open interface for our stakeholders. They can analyze and utilize our data for developing their services. 
also a stakeholder can create the required visualization, such, such as there is service providing evidence. <laughs> the previous was uh, uh, the picture of one building. This is this is for how how this solution has been targeted the entire real estate portfolio. We also need a place, uh, a platform for for these operations. For example, STL Semantic Data Lake. And, in, and, the, uh, and also we need to open our internal data for use. It's clear that we can't do this all without artificial intelligence. And again, I emphasize this is a vision. We are going toward this, this world, this, this, this kind of operation in Senna properties in, in Finland. I think that, uh, I hope that uh, in three, four years, that means 2020, uh, I can present you the solution that really works in the real world. Thank you. Damos paso a la última presentación, eh, será de Josep Farré y nos va a presentar una nueva publicación en primicia. Josep Farré eh, es, eh, está en la Dirección General de Edificación de Infraestructuras.cat de la Generalitat de Cataluña y desde hace un tiempo una serie de administraciones públicas en, en Cataluña están trabajando fuertemente para llegar, llegar a tener eh, unos procesos BIM como los, que, como los que nos están enseñando de otros países. Muchas gracias, Ignasi. La presión es alta. A ver cómo sale. Mm. Os voy a explicar lo que sé. Es, eh, en principio es la implantación de, de, de la metodología BIM en infraestructuras PUNCAT, eh, cómo fue su inicio y dónde estamos y sobre todo dónde queremos ir. Y empezamos. Ah. Para situarnos un poco y, y, y no os preocupéis, seré rápido. Sí que me gustaría decir eh, qué es Infraestructuras, aunque mucha gente lo debe conocer. Eh, infraestructuras es una empresa de la Generalitat, se creó en el año 90 y su objeto social es, es proyectar, construir, conservar, mantener y explotar todo tipo de infraestructuras que la Generalitat de Cataluña promueva. El esquema es sencillo, o sea, las necesidades de la sociedad se transmiten o se vehiculan a través de la administración pública y esta la encarga a, a, a nosotros, al gestor de infraestructuras. Eh, a partir de, de este encargo, nosotros promovemos eh, las licitaciones diversas, en principio la redacción del proyecto, la licitación y después el seguimiento de la ejecución de la obra, la recepción y, en algunos casos, la explotación y mantenimiento. Las obras que nos encargan son de todo tipo. Eh, aquí he separado lo que es obra civil edificación. Como podéis ver, es eh, obras variadas y de cualquier clase, desde carreteras, puertos, aeropuertos, canales, escuelas, institutos, hospitales, edificios judiciales polisportivos. 2013. 2013 eh, se me encargó que iniciáramos la primera prueba piloto de la implantación BIM. Normalmente en una, en una estructura la, los encargos ya sabéis cómo vienen. 
de arriba abajo. 2013 recibí esta llamada y mmm, con algún conocimiento que ya teníamos, porque ya se empezaba a hablar, dijimos vamos a probarlo. Y creo que fue una decisión acertada. El primer, la, la primera prueba piloto es el famoso Instituto Lluís Recasens, que aparece en todas las charlas. Y es un instituto que se proyectó el año 2014, se construyó en el 15 y en el 16 se entregó. Está en funcionamiento. El proyecto fue un éxito desde el primer día. El, en, en términos de, 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 de redacción, incluso fue más rápido que un proyecto tradicional. Nuestro modelo de trabajo en infraestructuras ah, hoy en día es la coordinación de las disciplinas. Eh, antes os he enseñado lo que sería estructura, instalaciones y por último aglutinado todo con, con arquitectura. Este sería el instituto acabado. El modelo lo hicimos antes. Eh, aquí me han hecho ver eh, la, el amigo Romá, que me ha ayudado a preparar la presentación. Eh, uno de los características del modelo es, si está bien implantado, evidentemente, es la posibilidad de variar la incidencia de la luz solar sobre el equipamiento. A partir de la fecha y la hora de la foto, introducimos estos datos en el modelo. Y si os fijáis en la sombra del testero, vemos que la, la sombra coincide perfectamente con la fotografía. Las lamas no, porque las lamas no se pueden mover, pero bueno, ya lo hemos modificado esto. 67. Hemos dicho de que en las estructuras la orden viene de arriba y se cumple. El 67 es la respuesta a lo que vimos en la prueba piloto. No esperamos acabarla cuando desde abajo decidimos de que nosotros queríamos trabajar en BIM. Lo vimos solo con una prueba piloto y no nos hemos equivocado. Eh, 67 es el número de proyectos que se han redactado desde el año 2014 hasta hoy. Aquí están todos. Los he contado. ¿Cómo lo hemos hecho? Porque los pliegos no los hemos cambiado. Sí que hemos introducido, y existe la posibilidad de que en, en, en la valoración de las mejoras se introduzca esta metodología. Es evidente que el, que el licitador que quiera ganar un concurso sabe que la ha de ofrecer, porque si no, no los puntos que damos, que son tres de cinco, son lo suficientemente importantes para que sea para que decante la, la adjudicación. Os voy a enseñar un no os voy a enseñar la 67, está de más pero sí que una muestra de lo que se ha hecho y se está haciendo. Muchos casos, y esto es, es un buen indicador de cómo está el sector, de estos 67 proyectos, la mayoría ya son obras. Como os he dicho antes, trabajamos para... Nuestros clientes son los departamentos de la Generalitat, en este caso sería salud, con la incidencia y la problemática que tenemos con las instalaciones. El BIM nos ha solucionado muchísimo la, la comprensión y la ubicación de estas instalaciones antes de ejecutarlas. 
aquí tenéis un ejemplo. Esto es una escuela, imaginaros un hospital, bueno, ya lo veréis también. Este es el hospital de Viladecans, un hospital que el proyecto ya está aprobado y que en breve tiempo va a salir a licitación. Este es el mismo hospital con la, con la superposición de, de las instalaciones dentro del edificio que sería de rehabilitación, que es el pequeño de allá, con la obra nueva. Eh, no hace falta decir nada más. La gente que trabajamos y conocemos estos proyectos eh, formamos parte ya de un apostolado, el apostolado BIM. Y yo me induje en esto a partir de, de sobre todo, de, de proyectos de instalaciones. Proyectos de instalaciones en construcción no estamos acostumbrados a esta resolución y a este detalle de solución. Es evidente que en el proyecto, simulando las instalaciones con sus verdaderas magnitudes, puedes eh, prever los problemas que te vas a encontrar en la obra. Y esto, evidentemente, se ha de notar en el costo final. No son todo edificios. También tenemos obras lineales o estaciones o intercambiadores. Quiero agradecer a, a Mireia y a Romá su colaboración y su empenta para tirar adelante el BIM también en obra civil. Nos den unas escuelas, esta ha salido esta mañana, un soterramiento a la línea de ferrocarriles, otra escuela, 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 un instituto. Esta sería el, el, la estación de Provenza de los ferrocarriles. Esto es un proyecto y una obra que se están ejecutando en Barcelona ahora mismo, en que se ha modelado la planificación de la obra. Unos juzgados, CAP, el intercambiador de Plaza España y, por último, el poliesportivo de Camcla. Si me permitís, esto sería la parte de instalaciones, estructura, arquitectura y acabados y situación actual. Estos 67 proyectos, suerte que han sido 67, imaginaros dos más, suponen una inversión o, 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 o licitación de alrededor de 300 millones de euros. Por eso os digo que más que BIM es un indicador del sector. Parece ser que definitivamente se ha dado el salto o la variación de indicación. ¿Por qué estamos implementando BIM? Porque tenemos unos mejores resultados en los proyectos. Y esto lo hemos vivido y lo hemos palpado. Eh, tenemos una mejor comunicación, una mejor compresión, mejor certeza, menor riesgo, reducción de las demoras. En definitiva, una mejor información para construir mejores edificios más rápido y sin desperdiciarlos. Eh, todas estas pruebas, eh, aparte del voluntarismo de los técnicos que han participado en ellas, eh, ha habido una, una, una definición. Eh, como os he dicho antes, en nuestros requerimientos iniciales basamos en la redacción de estos proyectos en la coordinación de, la, de las disciplinas. Eh, sabemos que es poco, que hay mucho más, que el BIM nos puede dar mucho más, pero este poco es muchísimo más de lo que teníamos hasta ahora con proyectos tradicionales. Resultado, las pruebas piloto en proyectos. 
me incidir en, en, en lo que os he comentado. Eh, vemos el modelo como un objeto real, lo podemos girar, lo podemos mover, eh, podemos hacer la muestra tamaño 1.1 que tantas veces pedimos de forma digital. Anticipamos la toma de decisiones y conocemos el estado del proyecto en tiempo real, mejor coordinación, mejor análisis, podemos obtener datos y una transversalidad de todo el proceso. Hemos visto que, aparte de proyectos, estos proyectos se ejecutan. Y aquí también, aparte de, de las pruebas piloto en que el proyecto ya se ha realizado en BIM desde su inicio, tenemos experiencias y exitosas de modelado del proyecto por parte del constructor. Y esto se ha hecho porque ha querido. El, bueno, el constructor ha visto que era un motivo de oportunidad para intentar situarse y posicionarse a lo que está viniendo. O sea que, de alguna manera, ve la, de, la, la, la posición donde va infraestructuras e intenta anticiparse. Ha sido... Mmm, las experiencias que hemos tenido han sido tan o más exitosas que las que ya partían de un proyecto modelado. El, el, la colaboración entre técnicos y sobre todo industriales ha llevado a modelos de éxito. Esta foto es de aquí, no está cogida del Google. Es una visita de obra en un CAP dentro de la caseta trabajando en el modelo real. Eh, es importante reflexionar también ahora cuando ya llevamos 67 proyectos, aquí estamos, estamos en el 17, tenemos ya un gran bagaje, conocemos, conocemos lo que el sector nos puede dar, pero también no queremos estancarnos. La, 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 la mejora en la redacción del proyecto o en la adjudicación del proyecto como mejora también nos ha hecho ver y destacar que en algunos casos el proyecto se modelaba una vez hecho. No es nuestro objetivo. Nosotros no queremos el BIM para hacer planos. Nosotros el BIM lo queremos para construir y el BIM lo que ha de ser es, es la maqueta virtual del, del edificio. Por eso llegamos a, a, a la famosa guía, que bueno, ahí está. Esta guía se ha publicado esta semana, es fruto del trabajo de muchos profesionales, es una guía ambiciosa, firme y fuerte y que indica dónde queremos ir, con ayuda de todos, evidentemente. Esta guía no, no es un manual, el manual ya vendrá, pero sí que indica nuestros objetivos y que queremos conseguir. No es una guía cerrada, no la veáis como la Biblia que no es intocable, todo el día se está hablando de trabajo colaborativo. La guía también será un trabajo colaborativo. Eh, puntos importantes de, de la guía. Y, puts, y quizá el más importante. Queremos incorporar a los usuarios y a los responsables de la explotación ya en el momento de redacción del proyecto. Esto es muy ambicioso, porque significa incorporar al cliente y usuario final 
en un proceso que todavía no están, no están participando ni incluso en los proyectos tradicionales. Pero entendemos de que si, volemos, si queremos perdón, un mejor eh, producto, tenemos que incorporarlos desde el principio. Esto es lo que os he dicho antes. Eh, no quiero un proyecto tradicional y finalmente modelado. No es el objetivo. Queremos trabajar en el modelo desde el inicio. Entregas parciales del modelo. No queremos una entrega final. Bueno, la guía también habla de, de, de establecer unas áreas de trabajo que facilitará la implementación de los entornos tecnológicos. Esto nos obligará a todos. Otra cosa que habla de la guía es que los responsables de interlocutores de los contratos seguirán siendo los técnicos con amplia experiencia en su dominio de actividad. Eh, evidentemente, no queremos dejar nadie fuera, pero y en una fase inicial estos técnicos competentes tendrán ayuda de técnicos que sepan BIM, pero lo que no podemos es esperar ni, ni, ni solucionar los proyectos con un especialista BIM. Tenemos que trabajar con el, con el técnico, autor y redactor del proyecto. Lo que os he dicho antes, la guía es una primera aproximación de la definición del nuevo marco de trabajo, por lo que Infraestructuras está abierta a sugerencias que cualquiera de los agentes de la cadena quiera aportar. La guía es un primer paso porque también en el 2017 os anuncio de que en edificación ya se va a pedir el requerimiento de BIM para la redacción de todos los proyectos de edificación. Eh, hasta, el, hasta ahora era una mejora, a partir del verano será un requerimiento. En principio edificación, obra civil no tardará mucho más. La guía impulsa la utilización de una estructuración de información basada en una clasificación de objetos. Esta clasificación de objetos ha sido ampliamente debatida por los principales usuarios. No es una guía que nos ha, perdón, no es una clasificación que nos hayamos inventado nosotros, sino que entre todos la hemos hecho. Está la famosa, el famoso debate de los entregables. Es un tema que tenemos que, 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 que solucionar y supongo que la comisión interdepartamental es un tema que tendría que afrontar. No creo que es conveniente hacer trabajar a los técnicos y con dos modelos de, de entregable, el proyecto tradicional y el modelo. Hemos de encontrar una, una, un término medio. Bueno, esta me gusta porque decimos lo que vemos. Vemos muy poco del iceberg. ¿Y qué es lo que querríamos ver? Verlo todo. Somos conscientes de que hacemos poco, pero este poco es mucho más y suficiente de lo que tenemos hasta ahora. Con ayuda de todos, veremos la parte de arriba y la parte de abajo. Muchas gracias.